Hi there, Sandra here from the Schwoven's Nest. Thanks for joining me today. I am collaborating with Liana over at Terrarium and Crafts. If you have not seen her channel before, she does some amazing miniature and natural things. She does all sorts of different themes on her channels, hauls, crafts, DIYs. You've got to go check it out. You will just be amazed at the things that she can create. My first project for you today is using two of these terracotta pots from the Dollar Tree and Rust-Oleum Chalked Chiffon Cream. I'm going to give both of these pots two coats. Now that they're fully dry, I'm going to dry brush with some Country Grey Rust-Oleum Chalk Paint. I'm just going to use a little bit. I want to have a bit of distressing. I don't want it to be too heavy, so I'm just going to make sure that I dab off as much paint as I can just to get a light touch. I'm going to do some dry brushing on this golden pear and I'm using the chiffon cream paint to do that with this. Again, I just want a really light touch. I'm going to do the same thing with these two little green apples. These were an Amazon purchase and I'll have that link down in the description box. The pears I picked up at Pier 1 on clearance last year. I've now got to fill up my little pots with something so I can have the fruit sitting on top. I've got this leftover styrofoam. I always keep all the styrofoam from different packaging and different things when I get things in the mail. I think this came from a large TV and I'm just gonna be able to wedge that right inside the little pot. I'm going to use some bits of this green moss and I'm gonna hot glue that inside the pots. Then I'll use some hot glue to glue down the fruit. I'm going to do the apples a little bit different. I want them to be a little bit off kilter. So I'm going to glue this one down onto the moss, but the second one is going to need a stick or some kind of wire to make it a little bit more elevated. So I've just gone into my stash and found another piece of floral wire that I'm gonna poke through the bottom of the apple and then just stick it into the foam. My second project is using this pack of 12 acorns from the Dollar Tree. I am really into acorns this year and I see a lot of them around so I know that's a bit of a trend right now so I thought I would just stick with that trend. I don't like the color of these so I'm going to take the chiffon cream and give them a couple of coats. When you're done watching my video, I would really appreciate it if you would click that link down in my description box, head over to Liana's channel and see what she did for our collab today. I'm going to make a beaded garland with the acorns and some beads. I've got a large darning needle and this yarn that I picked up at the Dollar Tree. In a previous project, I used it to cover a whole acorn, a really large one. So I'll link that down in the description box if you want to go see how I made that one. I'm just going to go ahead and feed the yarn through the bead, tie a knot at the other end, and then I'm going to start alternating with beads and acorns. Since the acorns are just made out of styrofoam, I'm very easily able to just poke that darning needle right through the top and feed it all the way through and that is going to attach the acorn to the yarn. The beads I'm using came in a big bucket from my Dollarama. They were $3.50 for, I think there's a couple hundred beads in there, but they're all different styles. So I'm just going to take the dark beads and the lighter colored wooden beads and alternate those with the acorns and use all 12 of my acorns up. Here's the bead garland. I just love it. Those acorns are absolutely adorable. I decided to use the same yarn and make a tassel. This yarn is really slippery, so I had to use some jute string to do the tying off of the loop at the top. Then I'll trim the bottom loops to make them loose, and then I'll tie it to the end of the bead garland. Since these are all for my tiered tray, no tiered tray would be complete without at least one sign. I'm taking this little crafter's canvas from the Dollar Tree. They come two to a pack and I'm just going to paint the canvas portion inside with the chiffon cream and I'm going to give it two coats. 
Using my bare dark antique wax and a small paintbrush, I'm just going to apply the wax to the wood portion of the frame. I'm also going to go around the edges on the canvas just to give it a dimensional look. Using my Craft Smart oil based paint pen in black, and this is the fine tip, I'm going to use somewhat of a script freehand style for the word hello and then underneath that I'm going to put the word fall but just in some simple uppercase letters. I'm also going to give the letters a little bit more dimension by making them a little thicker and thinner in spots just so it looks more professional and high-end. Using some of these burlap oak leaves that I picked up at the Dollar Tree, they're five in a pack. They are wired and they're quite large, but for this little project, I want to make a little mini leaf. So I'm just going to cut that out of one of the sections and then I'll hot glue it onto the sign. I also have these tiny little pine cones. They're actually not pine cones. They're little seeds or cones from a hemlock tree. I did some foraging at my fall in the spring, found myself a big bucket of these. So you'll be seeing me use these in my fall decor as well as some of my Christmas decor. But I just thought they were perfect to add on to this little sign. Project number three is using this picket fence. I'm just using a portion of it. It was in the miniature section at my Dollarama. I'm also going to be using some of these little hemlock pine cones again. Actually not pine cones, but hemlock cones. And I'm going to make a little wreath. Then I'm going to take some of that burlap leaf and cut some little bits to glue inside of the wreath. I'm also going to use some tiny little green sprigs of boxwood just to add a little bit more color. The last project I have for you today for my tiered tray little guys is making a wooden ladder. So I have these two pieces of garden stake that I had trimmed off from a different project and I thought that would be perfect just to have that as the legs of the ladder. And then I'm using these other little pieces of balsa wood and I'm gonna trim those down and make the rungs. Using hot glue, I'm just gonna glue the pieces together. I'm using my stash of acrylic paint in browns and blacks just to give this ladder a first coat of paint and then I'm going to dry brush it. I like using blacks and browns for my base coat because that just makes it look more old and weathered. I'm now going to use some of my country gray chalk paint and just give it some distressing. I want to lighten up that wood a little bit, make it look like it's been outside for a really long time. And I'm also going to add some of the chiffon cream paint as well, just to give it even more texture. I decided that I wanted a little sign on top of the ladder. So I found this little scrap piece of wood. It already has an arrow shape in it and I'm going to paint it with country gray chalk paint. When it was dry, I dry brushed it with some of my black acrylic paint. Sorry, I missed that footage, but you can kind of see the idea. I'm also going to do the same thing with this light beige color. It's kind of a cross between beige and gray, very similar to the Waverly mineral paint. And I'm just going to do some dry brushing with that as well. Taking my Craft Smart paint pen again, I'm just going to write the words pumpkin patch two miles on this little piece of wood. I didn't like the square edge at the end, so I decided just to cut out a small little V and it just gives it a lot more character. The last thing to do for this project is hot glue the little arrow right on top of the ladder. And I'm going to do it on a little kitty wampus there, a little angle, just to make it look a little bit more cutesy. 
the final project today is making another acorn. I'm using a pine cone and what I decided to do was use the bottom of the pine cone as the top of the acorn and then I'm taking this jute rope from Dollar Tree and I'm going to wrap it around gluing as I go and make it the shape of an acorn. This pine cone really didn't like the hot glue so once I got it established the first couple of rows I ended up just using my hot glue right on top of the jute rope that was underneath it and that turned out much better I was able to wrap it a lot faster that way I then decided that I didn't like some of the gaps that were in the pine cone this one was kind of open quite a bit so I just took some pieces of a different pine cone and kind of wedged them in with some hot glue just to give it a little bit more fullness if I were to repeat this project, which I probably will, I'd look for some pine cones that have a more tight bottom that would work better for this project. I am so happy with how all of these turned out. I just love doing little items for tiered trays. I'd like to thank Liana for collabing with me today. I had a lot of fun. Please make sure you go click that link and check out her channel, Terrarium and Crafts. I am sure you will be inspired. Thanks so much for watching to the end. If you like this kind of content, I'd love for you to hit that red subscribe button and the bell to get notified when I upload new videos. See you in the next one.